welcome back to my channel. My name is Carly Stevens. I'm the author of the Young Adult Fantasy Fury and Rising, and this is English Nerd. So in today's edition of All About a Tale of Two Cities, I'm talking about book three, chapters six and seven. Now, of course, you've read at least up to this point. If, you, if you're watching this video, if you haven't, then stop, go back, and make sure that you do know what happens, because since I'm talking about everything, of course, there are going to be some spoilers. So chapter six is called Triumph. Chapter seven is a knock at the door. So starting with chapter six, Triumph. It is, uh, it picks up the story with Darnay still in the prison of La Force. Dr. Manette has been regularly trying to help him for the past year and three months. And finally, there is going to be a trial for basically everybody who's left in La Force. There are 23 people who are summoned to this trial and it's just another example of that trial motif. Basically, it's just Darnay on trial over and over again, either legitimately or illegitimately. So this trial is a bit different from the rest in a few different ways. Um, it's kind of a mix of a legitimate trial and an illegitimate trial, like we saw at the Gate of Paris when he's just asked a couple questions and then summarily thrown into prison. Um, but it's it still is a mockery of justice in most ways. There's a comment at the beginning of the chapter that underscores another point that I've been making all the way along this, this series, and uh, it comes about a page in. It says that all of us have like wonders hidden in our breasts, only needing circumstances to evoke them. So we are capable of really anything. People are mysteries, we're mysteries even to ourselves. We might look at these these mobs and these travesties of justice and think that we're so far above them, but given the right circumstances, many of us have, you know, both good and and evil within us, the capability, the potential to do to make these different choices. And so we shouldn't just dismiss as impossible any of the things that happen in, in this book. So all the, all the prisoners are brought up in about an hour and a half. Pretty much all of them are condemned to death. There, there are a couple who are sent back to prison, but then it's Darnay's turn. So Darnay stands up. Dr. Manette is sure to be there because he's the only one that the court really takes seriously, the court takes seriously. And Gabelle is there, the one who wrote the letter back in Drawn to the Lodestone Rock, asking Darnay to come and help him. So poor Gabelle has just been rotting away in prison this entire time until three days before the trial when they remember that he exists and, and bring him out. I suspect that Dr. Manette was instrumental in, in bringing him as a witness on behalf of Darnay, but he's, he's pretty bitter about the whole thing. So long story short, because of Dr. Manette's impassioned defense of Darnay, and his personal popularity, that is Dr. Manette's, uh, Darnay is, is acquitted of his charge of treason against the Republic one and indivisible. And so everybody just shouts and screams and it says, no sooner was the acquittal pronounced than tears were shed as freely as blood at another time. It's, I've mentioned this before, but there's just this, this overflow of unfettered emotion. Um, this is the negative side of just letting emotion and instinct, devoid of logic, um, take over. At the beginning of the revolution, we saw some logic. There was a grim sort of justice to it, you know, an eye for an eye, but here they are going so far beyond any logic that even their acquittals have this kind of violent emotion to them, although it's in his favor, uh, in Darnay's favor here. So Darnay, in the midst of all of this, is, is carried home on a chair that has a red flag draped over it, red's the color of the Republic, it's all the, all the hats that they wear. And everybody goes marching through the streets except two people, it says. Uh, I think it's Dr. Manette, who, or Darnay, both of them probably, looking around and seeing who is, who's following them on this procession. And it's basically everybody from the whole court except for two people. And um, that's it has to, it has to be the Defarges. Has to be. Uh, it doesn't doesn't say, but if it's not, then I'll eat my hat. 
So they drop Darnay off and fall into that Carmagnole, that dance that I talked about with the uh, Wood Sawyer chapter that you remember. And although Lucy is still, when she sees Darnay, she's obviously overjoyed, who wouldn't be? But there's still this fear. She She's afraid that the mob could turn at any time because they're unpredictable and, and she's right. But Dr. Manette says, no, 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 don't be afraid. I've saved him. Which is another example of that resurrection theme, going from being basically a dead man to coming back to the land of the living. It's happened a few times to Darnay now. So chapter seven, knock at the door is another fairly short, simple chapter. Um, besides the knock at the door at the end of the chapter, the only thing that really takes up any time in these pages is Miss Pross and Mr. Cruncher getting ready to go shopping for the group, which I think I, just the two of them together is such a delightful dynamic, Miss Pross and, and Jerry Cruncher. Um, more more to say on that like when they actually go shopping and things happen in chapter 8 um, but here the only things worth mentioning I think are Miss Pross's refusal to learn French she calls it nonsense um, she just sticks to her English and it becomes an important plot point later so she doesn't speak French at all and instead she just has this unbelievably English way about her. She even says, I am a subject of his most gracious majesty, King George III, and as such my maxim is, confound their politics, frustrate their knavish tricks, on him are th our hopes we fix, God save the king. And Jerry kind of mutters it along with her as though it's something you're supposed to say in church. And Miss Pross is not a fearful kind of person. She she goes out and, and says, nope, I'm just gonna carry on with my life and and we have to hold our heads up and fight low, as my brother Solomon used to say. Which is kind of funny, because we know that her brother Solomon actually was a terrible human being who left her, took all of her money, and then abandoned her. <laughs> so keep your head high and fight low means two different things to her brother and then Miss Pross. But Miss Pross is the kind of forgiving, optimistic person that um, could take that and, and spin it in a, in a good way. So Lucy thinks that she hears footsteps on the, st on the stairs, footsteps, footsteps, and Dr. Manette says, my love, the staircase, or is it, Doc wait, yes, it's Dr. Manette, my love, the staircase is as still as death. As he said the word, a blow was struck upon the door, dun dun dun, echoing footsteps return, right after Jerry and, and uh, Miss Pross leave, there's this, this knock, and the dramatic tension there is absolutely wonderful. So as soon as the knock comes, it's people coming to gather Darnay again because he's been denounced. The idea of being denounced is a, is a big one in part three. That's always the, the most substantial threat that you can give somebody is that you'll denounce them to the Republic because most people don't need much more than that to get a death sentence. Just the rumor that they have been treason, treasonous toward the Republic is enough to get them killed. So Evermond, Charles Evermond, Darnay gets taken again and, and Dr. Manette's enraged. He's done all this work all this time for over a year to try to get Darnay acquitted and freed and finally he succeeds and literally it's the same day and Darnay is taken again, so he demands, okay, who who has accused him of something new? And the people who come to take him away say, three people, three people denounced him. It's um, Monsieur and Madame Defarge, which don't really surprise us too much. Um, maybe Monsieur Defarge surprises us a little bit, but Madame Defarge, not in the least. And Dr. Manette demands, okay, who's the third? And the people just kind of look at him and say, well, that's interesting um, that you ask. Why don't you just, why don't you just come tomorrow and uh, to the trial and, and you'll find out. And they're really coy and weird about it. 
So perhaps some foreshadowing there. So that is it for those two chapters. Um, the chapters starting with chapter eight are to the end are the most important chapters in the entire book, except for maybe chapter 21 with uh, echoing footsteps. So if you're reading this book for the first time, strap in, enjoy the next, the next chapters after this. And uh, that's, that's all for now. So put your questions and comments down below. Don't forget to like this video if you like it and subscribe for more English nerdy goodness. All right.